there are two common mistakes when playing hexagon offense. Number one is not rotating when the disc is on the sideline, having players flood downfield instead. And the second one is not looking for the return pass. In this video, we're going to have a look at what that means and how to avoid it. When the disc is passed to the sideline, it's very common for the players behind the disc to push up to be level with it. This creates a large amount of space in the backfield, which those players could then cut back into. So why do I think this is a bad thing? Firstly, pushing up from behind squeezes the downfield space, which has the knock-on effect of limiting the number of available options. Those players moving up from behind essentially mean that the shape is rotating towards and into the sideline. This means that the throw to the nearest player cutting into the backfield is the most likely one to be made, which then leads to a swing over to the other side. The problem with this is it's very predictable. If that pass into the backfield is marked out, then the options for the offense quickly dry up. For the Colombians to break, they quickly move towards the other half. Cardenas. And even if the pass is made, then you're not really attacking from the position, you're just dumping and swinging off the line, which in a way plays into the defense's hands, especially if they're forcing middle. They're perfectly happy for you to move the dish from side to side, taking lots of passes without any aggressive attacking moves. Now against weak teams, this rotation on the sideline isn't so much of a problem because it often corrects itself by being able to pass the disc down the line. When you're over rotated, if you're able to hit a free pass down the sideline, then it essentially corrects your shape. However, against strong teams, you suddenly find those passes down the line as less likely to be on, and you end up getting into a loop of quite tamely swinging the disc from side to side. Now here's the critical thing, if you maintain your shape on the sideline, it gives you more opportunities to attack forwards from behind the disc. Here we can see a couple of clips where players behind the disc get the disc moving forwards and how it opens up aggressive attacking options. Nice way to shut down the around. Cardenas. Just back to Alba. And they get the give and go. Nice peel off, but leaving the fight nicely. You can see the Aussies trying to switch on and off to try and cause confusion in these tight spaces. Big old mark. In this point from Colombia in the World Games against Australia, we can see how the shape immediately rotates forward when the disc is passed to the sideline, and Colombia fall into the pattern of dumping and swinging. One of the problems with these passes is that the momentum of the catchers is always going towards the backfield rather than towards the end zone you're attacking, so it's a far less aggressive move. Columbia's spacing throughout this point is fairly good. Keep an eye on Julio Duque here as he fills in the second back position when the disc is on the sideline. Because he's there early, he's able to immediately look downfield after catching. They reverse the direction of the disc and are able to score on the far side of the field. In this point against Japan, Mosquera passes to the sideline and then puts the head down and clears out wide. The side it would have been better if she had stayed connected to the disc and recognised her defender as poached off, so she's able to get a quick return pass off the line and could even get the disc attacking forwards. But she moves towards the second back point and communicates that she's free. Ford gets the disc nicely moving forwards from behind, is able to hit Manu on the inside and then swing over to Mosquera. One more small point with this clip, Mosquera should avoid hard pivoting here in the hope that there's a continuation pass. She shouldn't turn her back to Manu as she should always be open for that very quick return pass. Goes with a short pass to Cardenas. In this clip against France, Colombia are again pushing up a little bit too much when the disc is passed to the sideline, falling into the predictable dump and swing pattern until Simon Ramirez gets the disc and decides to start looking for the return pass. This is something that's been lacking from the clips that we've seen so far, and is the second point of this video. About four passes in the space of three seconds there. Looking for the return pass changes up your offense and makes it very unpredictable and very aggressive. So in this clip, Simon dribbles across the front of the end zone, but Cantor turns his back to him. If he had immediately hit him, then Ramirez would have been free at the front corner of the end zone. But even with this delay, the move is quick and threatening enough that all the defenders need to reposition, and then a quick flurry of passes over to the other side open up the goal. So what do we really mean by look for the return pass? 
Well, it involves two players, the person who's just thrown the disc and the person who's catching the disc. The person who's just thrown the disc should look to get the disc back in their hands. The easiest time to get free is immediately after throwing. So they should either throw and go and attack some viable space aggressively, or they can throw and stay, especially if their defender poaches off them. If they're able to get the disc back in one second, then they can use this poach to their advantage. The second part of looking for the return pass is with the catcher. The catcher has to have this priority list sorted in their head. Number one, throw to any open pass in front of you. Number two, look for the previous thrower. And number three, face the center of the shape. Looking for the previous thrower should happen within one second, regardless of the direction you're facing when you catch the disc. We can actually see Simon do this in this clip, checking in with the previous thrower briefly just to see if they've made a move. Now if every player looks for the return pass, then it's very easy to keep flow and to maintain your attack. The problem with not looking for the return pass is that it will work against weaker teams. You can catch the disc, turn to look for a new teammate, and the chances are that they've timed their move and they're able to get free where you want them and when you want them. But only against weaker teams. If you try this against strong teams, the chances are higher that actually these downfield players are struggling to get free, they're not quite able to get free at the right time or in the right place, and then flow will stop. The advantage for looking for the previous thrower is it's much easier for them to get free even against good opposition. So therefore in the tough games you're more likely to retain flow and continue building your attack. Something that really helps with the return pass is turning inwards after you catch the disc. In this clip Simon Ramirez does really well on the first couple of catches and throws to demonstrate that he's not travelling. Continues. Ramirez downfield. Colombians looking very aggressive. None of his teammates are up for the return pass until Manu comes into play. Now, when you have two players who are both looking for the return pass, things get really exciting. Unfortunately, Simon's just a little bit sloppy with his footwork here, and Khalif spots it and calls travel. But if he had just been slightly tighter with the footwork, then they were double dribbling towards the goal and would have been very hard to stop. The opponent. Simon Ramirez being, being called a travel. Mano into the end zone. It's been called as a point for Colombia. In this clip, Cantor reacts perfectly to his defender bidding by making a throw and go move towards the middle. Jimenez stays available for the return pass here, which is good, but there was an opportunity to attack the space in front of the disc with a double dribble move if he had accelerated out of his throw, matching the velocity of Cantor. Oh, nice find there. Makes the inside dishes across. You'll notice how the Colombians really do like to keep the disc moving. Torres making the over the top. There is nobody really in a deep space in the zone. No one really able to score. Most players clustered outside. I think they're trying to isolate Jimenez, but it is not him. It is Simon Ramirez with the first score. We can see this aggressive attacking forwards down the middle move in this clip as Simon accelerates out of his throw as he passes to Jimenez, opening up the scoring opportunity. Nice inside find across the field. Jimenez moving nicely. Oh, and it's going to be the goal for Colombia. In this final clip, we can see the aggressive looking for return passes and forward motion up the middle of the field. Every player on the Colombian team getting involved. It's a really excellent point, which finishes off with Torres throwing for the goal. I talk about three other common mistakes that I've noticed in the Patreon version of this video, including teams not really knowing how to productively field the pull, which is a pretty important one because it happens every single point that you start on offense, and a couple of spacing issues which I have solutions for. You could be watching that video in three minutes. If you think we're doing good work here, then please just go through the effort of signing up to Patreon. It's only £1 a month for the basic stuff, so it really is just the clicking that you're trying to avoid. If you pay a little bit more, you get a free disc, but at the end of the day, if you want to know how I think you should field the pull out of Hex offense, then you really should be a patron. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again soon.